Hello, I'm Brendan Donnelly. I'm the director of the Federal Trust, an educational think tank specializing in European issues. Uh, the Trust is engaged at the moment on a project called Brexit Can Be Undone. And we're seeking through crowdfunding financial support from you, the public, for what we think is this very worthwhile project. Details of how to donate can be found in the introduction to this video. The study is being led by Professor Andrew Blick of King's College London, and I'm going to be talking with him here today uh, about the work and about the proposals that he'll be advocated, the tr advocating, the trust will be advocating uh, for rejoining the European Union. Uh, Andrew, thank you for joining us and thank you for the work you're doing on this uh, project. Um, why is it a good time now, do you think, to be talking about uh, the possibility of rejoining the European Union? A good time to be talking about something that needs to happen is now. So the reason it's a good time now is because the sooner we start talking about it, the better, the sooner we can make it happen. We're also seeing increasing evidence of the damage that Brexit is doing. This kind of damage is broadly in line with many of the predictions that were made in advance of the referendum and indeed in advance of leaving and were dismissed under the label Project Fear by supporters of Brexit. This damage is now becoming real. It's no longer Project Fear. We can see the damage in terms of trade, inward and outward trade being damaged. We can see in terms of damage to our research community being cut off from some of its previous European links. We can see the political damage being done internally, that it's brought to power a government which has got a worrying approach on a number of constitutional issues and political issues. And we can also see the damage being done to the UK's standing and reputation in the world. And we can also see that uh, Brexit is part of a broader international phenomenon, another worrying phenomenon across the world of a tendency towards what is widely known as populism. And it's taking us in that general direction politically and is part of this broader international trend, which is a problem for democracy, which we should not be part of as, as a UK if we can avoid it. So for all those reasons, the damage is real. When the damage is that real and that apparent, the time to start talking about res reversing the cause of the damage is now. Do you think that damage is going to get worse? The damage will get worse because it's cumulative. It's something which doesn't happen as a one-off problem. It's something which builds and builds and builds. So if you're damaging your economy this year and you're damaging your economy to the same or even greater extent next year, the damage is by definition greater. The longer you leave it, the worse the damage will become. It, 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 it multiplies. It doesn't just happen as a one-off thing which will be overcome. It keeps growing and new forms of damage will manifest themselves. Furthermore, the supposed benefits that were, that were apparently going to off offset any possible damage aren't manifesting themselves. Why do you think that uh, more people aren't calling for rejoin? Uh, a lot of people um, from the opinion polls recognise that Brexit was a mistake, but very few people seem to be willing to get above the parapet and say rejoining is the obvious answer to these problems. As you say, a lot of people, uh, probably more than uh, voted Remain in the first instance in 2016, recognise that Brexit has, has been a disaster, ha is not working, or rather could never have worked in the first place is probably a better way of putting it. So a lot of people are recognising this. And I'm sure lots of politicians, including conservative politicians, including perhaps the present prime minister at the time of recording this interview, Boris Johnson, probably privately knows this, that it's it's inflict, it's creating lots of problems for the UK. But they're not speaking about it as openly. And I think there's a number of reasons for this. One is the trauma of the Brexit experience from at least 20, June 2016 onwards is something they want to get away from. They want to move away from. And their reaction to that is to think, well, if we don't talk about it, if we pretend that it's not a problem or if we pretend that Brexit is not is not the source of the problem or if we pretend even if it is a source of the problem, there's nothing we can do do about it. We can avoid that trauma. That's obviously a mistake because uh, 
if Brexit is the source of all these problems, then the trauma is continuing. And the way to deal with the trauma, to make the trauma go away, however unpalatable it might seem, is to reverse Brexit, is to rejoin. So that's one reason is the trauma. Another reason is some people buy into this idea that there's some kind of democratic imperative, democratic mandate created by the referendum of 2016 and perhaps the election of 2019 that means we're bound to leaving, we can't reverse it or we can't reverse it for some indeterminate period of time that someone's called a, a generation, although no one can tell you how long a generation is. So there's that democratic argument. Again, I don't think that's a valid, valid de democratic argument. It's a classic case of creating a constitutional convention about something without ever really having a debate about what it means, why it's justified. So that's another reason. And then finally, people are told it's just not practical. It's not pol politically possible. It can't be done. Even if they might want to do it, it's just not realistic to say it can be done. And that, of course, means there's no leadership coming from politicians. If the people are, are in, in a democracy, although obviously the people, the, the public are incredibly important, leadership is also important. And uh, none of the UK-wide parties or the parties with UK-wide aspirations are offering a clear lead on this. The only lead... The only offer to rejoin the uh, European Union that's coming to any of the UK population is from parties that are saying you can rejoin the European Union by leaving the UK first. So that's Republicans in Northern Ireland, uh, nationalists in Scotland and Wales are saying, yes, you can rejoin the European Union if you leave the UK. That's the only offer being given. So for that, all those reasons, the, uh, the movement just isn't there yet, even though the makings of it, the necessity of it and the broad uh, base of public opinion that isn't happy with what's happened is there. Yes, it runs the risk of becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. People say it can't happen, it won't happen, and therefore it can't and won't happen. Um, but you have some thoughts um, that you're going to be putting forward in the Trust um, publications on this subject um, of how it, it might be possible to mobilise, perhaps even as soon as the next general election, the the pro Brexit, um, the pro the anti Brexit um, majority of, of British the British electorate. Can you can you give us an outline of that, please? Yes, and as you say, there's a large body of people who never supported Brexit in the first place and continue to be unhappy about it. So the question is, how do we mobilise them? Obviously, that's a challenge, but it's a challenge that we need to embark on immediately because the sooner we start with it, the sooner we can achieve it. Now, one way forward is looking at means by which the that body of voters who are a substantial number and on the evidence of the 2019 general election are a larger number than those who voted for clearly pro-Brexit parties who certainly didn't get anywhere near 50% of the vote in that general election. How do we mobilise that body of people who were seemingly a majority in the 2019 general election? Well, one answer is get them to vote for uh, the same candidate in every parliamentary constituency. Now, that's easier said than done, but the point is we're already seeing some degree of to some extent under the counter, but cooperation between the Labour and Liberal Democrat parties, which shows that when they work together or when they agree to some kind of mutual non-aggression pact in certain constituencies, this can be achieved. There's also polling evidence to support the view that if people who dislike the present government, the present regime, who of course very much a Brexit regime. Brexit is the whole reason they're in power and they need to continue with the Brexit project and make us believe it's real to remain in power. When when those voters who don't like that are presented with a single candidate or very clearly steered towards a single candidate, regardless of whether that person is Lib Dem, Labour or maybe even Green, there's clear evidence from polling they're willing to back that party, even if it's not necessarily their first choice of party. So there is some evidence for that. Obviously, one problem at the moment is the, the parties I've mentioned as possibly taking part in that kind of agreement, who are edging towards it in a, in a perhaps a softer, more informal way, at the moment aren't committed to rejoin. Far from it, Labour Party are, if you, know, if you believe their policy rhetoric, are actually committed to diverging further from the European Union to get the supposed benefits on offer. So 
those parties need to reorientate their position and need to face up to the fact that when they oppose Brexit in 2016, they are correct to do so. And we, that needs to be pushed on them very hard. And I'm sure lots of their members and voters take that view anyway. But if they are able to reorientate, they also need to know that there is an, a, an electoral path there they can follow if they want to take a joint position on, on the EU, which is supportive of, of rejoining the European Union. There is an electoral path there that gets them out of the difficulties that Labour in particular believe they face around the fact in some constituencies they want to regain there are apparent large bodies of support for leave. So there's there's an electoral pathway there. It's not necessarily the only way of getting to the goal, but in my opinion, that's the first thing to attempt to do is to persuade in particular Lib Dems and Labour that they, they need to move towards a rejoined position. If they do so, they can work together around a platform that includes rejoining and also would probably include some other shared policy objectives, one of which might be electoral reform, move towards a PR system, which is a long-standing objective of the Lib Dems and is something for, for which is growing support within the Labour Party. So that's the kind of programme I'd be looking towards as the immediate uh, part of a, of, a, of, a, of a campaign to push towards rejoining. Yes, it, it would be a, a statement of common constitutional principles, um, which might well at this moment be particularly attractive, because I think there are many people who think that the way the present government was elected and comports itself throws great doubt upon the, the fact that we have the electoral system that we do, that we have the unwritten constitution that we do, um, that things depend on the good chat theory of government, um, which really has, has shown itself to be, a, to be a hollow shell at the moment. Um, a different constitutional settlement, including rejoin, um, might well um, put an end to that and might be attractive to many non-conservative voters. Um, Andrew, thank you very much indeed. We'll look forward to reading the final outcome of your, of your report. Um, and I'd just like to remind um, people watching this video um, that financial support for the Federal Trust is always very welcome. And the way of going about that is set out in the introduction. Thank you very much.